stressed, overwhelmed, confused. I think these words describe a lot of us nowadays. Hey Smithfield friends, my name is Joe Thompson and I'm the pastor here at Smithfield Christian Church. And I recently sat down with my friend Chris Conley, who is a licensed and practicing clinical therapist. And I asked him about some of these different emotions that a lot of us are going through nowadays. So Chris, tell me, you know, what are some uh, common issues or concerns as far as mental health that you're seeing in folks right now related to COVID? Yeah, I think right now, um, probably the biggest thing is people kind of living in isolation um, or at least with a like, limited community, uh, you know, not having uh, access to maybe their friend groups or even families the same way that they used to. And not even that it's detrimental um, just for the sake of not or being alone, but when it's so much like taken out of your routine, um, that that takes a toll on people. And, you know, I think in the bigger, in the pic bigger picture, you know, for some folks, it's actually led to, you know, almost this loss of hope. Nobody has any idea what the future looks like. And, uh, you know, I think it's safe to say like, this is a actually pretty unique thing. I mean, we've been through hardships, we've been through struggles um, as people, as communities. I mean, where I'm at in Virginia Beach, you know, we had the shooting last year in the municipal building. So, yeah. like, we have been through things, but something that's nationwide and worldwide with, like, no end or predictability in sight, um, it, it does take people's hope away. Um, mm. And even gives them a little bit of fear for, you know, the future, if things are going to get better. So, I think that's where you see a lot of anxiety and maybe even some depression come in for folks. So thinking through all the issues that people are dealing with with mental health when it comes to their stress and depression, like you mentioned with with COVID, what are what are some things? Can you think of some things? And even in your training, maybe and this is some stuff that you've you've shared with some of your clients. Are there some simple things that people can be doing on a regular basis to try and cope and deal with, and even give them some hope through all this? Yeah. So probably the most, I think the most helpful thing, um, and it's been helpful for me too it probably seems a little counterintuitive, but it's like, don't pay as much attention. Um, mm -hmm. Turn off the news cycle once in a while. Um, quit scrolling through everything that's on social media. You know, as you know, we kind of have this overwhelm of information and yeah. um, it, it doesn't set us up to move through with any hope or positivity um, you know, I, I think it's fine to keep up with the news and I joke around with people. I say like, man, I might watch 10 minutes of the news, but I know enough people, like if something bad happens, that's, <laughs> that's really important. Like somebody like probably you or somebody's going to text me about it. Like, <laughs> we'll hey, let you know. Yeah. Hey dude, did you see what just happened? And then I'm like, Oh, I should really go look. <laughs> um, but like I found a, I found a podcast, um, I haven't even been listening to it lately, but for a while there, it was just like a 10 minute news recap from the day before. And that was it, man. In the morning, I would just listen to that 10 minutes, stay away from the news, whether it's talk radio, cable TV, all that stuff, just stay away from it. I think um, on the other end of that though, you can use technology um, to find creative ways to embrace some of the things we were talking about before, like isolation or, you know, not connecting with people. I mean, you and I have done this with our friend group where, you know, we've gotten online and played like a game of cards together and mm -hmm. had like a video chat up and there's like five of us. And, you know, when I'm talking to people about that, I'm like, we have to, we do have to acknowledge that it's not the same as if we were going to go to somebody's house. Yeah. But if that's something we can't have, let's shoot for something that's 75%, 50% so that we don't stick in that like 0% of isolation. And, you know, so being creative with technology, um, being creative with how you connect with folks. Um, and then I, I think seeking like some professional help if, if you're really down with anxiety or depression, um, you know, I think it makes total sense to have a little bit of anxiety and depressed you know, mood and stuff during a time like this. But if you get to a place where it's, it's like inhibiting your day to day, 
then it's totally okay to reach out. And, you know, as somebody who works as a counselor, I can tell you, like, we all are capable of doing it digitally. Um, and so there's access and there's people who, you know, are available to help. And, uh, you know, even if it's just somebody you check in with once in a while, just to kind of dump out the emotions. Mm. Um, you know, I've had people who say, yeah, you know, right now I'm talking to you so that I don't have to bother my husband or my wife as much about just how anxious I am. I'm like, well, you should talk to them a little bit, but <laughs> I, I get it. Like, it's good. Um, but I think it's, you know, seeking professional help if you need it. Yeah. By yeah. all means. So I think uh, kind of zero your mind in on families for a second real quick. What would you say to maybe a parent whose child is experiencing this? Maybe it's a high schooler who is going to be missing out on some of those major moments in life, or maybe it's a parent who is overwhelmed with the idea of I'm going to have to like do homeschooling or right. virtual learning or whatever it is. What, what would you say to those families right now? Yeah, well, first, I don't have kids, so I want to say that up front. So if anybody's <laughs> like, he doesn't know what he's talking about, to a degree, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but I think, there's a, I think there's a moment here that's really powerful for families where you can teach your kids how we move through a crisis. Mm. Um, you know, I think parents will often feel a pressure to be able to fix it or you know, to have some magical solution. And I think this is one of those opportunities where parents can really teach our kids, how do we navigate through something if we don't know the answers or we don't yeah. know? And a, and a big part of that is to acknowledge it for what it is and allow some room to grieve and, you know, move through it. Grieve is just a fancy word for, you know, acknowledging a loss and reorganizing your expectations. So, you know, when your kid says, man, it really stinks, like I was really looking forward to graduation or, you know, we have this big party we were going to do. And like the first step is, yeah, man, it really stinks. And I'm really sorry you're going through this, you know, instead of like, yeah. oh, well, you, sh you know, I, some, you know, I don't know how every different family is going to react, but you know, as far as like, oh, well, you should be grateful for this or, mm, you know, yeah. it, could be, it could be worse, you know, somebody <laughs> across town, you know, you heard about people are dying from this and you're just like, no, like it's okay to, to acknowledge with your kids or your neighbors or whoever, like when things stink, they stink. Yeah. And let's absolutely. acknowledge, yeah, let's acknowledge that. Um, and like I said, kind of reorganize our expectations, reorganize our plan around that you know, it, we don't want to stay stuck in that, mm -hmm. you know, like you don't want to be there for months and months and months. Like, Oh my gosh, you know, I'm still sad about graduation. Like we can, we can acknowledge it, but we want to move through it. Um, and I would encourage, you know, parents to really lean in to other parents in their community. Yeah. Like this is the time. I mean, you got people who have never thought they were going to have to be in charge of their kid's school. Um, people who are trying to figure out not just school, but how do I manage my own job? How do I manage my own job in light of having to be responsible for school shifts? So like partner up with other parents. I mean, anything from like a homeschool co-op group to just a, maybe just a brain trust of parents in the neighborhood who can, you know, you can vent to, you can share strategies with, you know, parent A can talk to parent B like, yo, we've been doing this with our kids and it's been awful. And then, you know, the next family can, oh, well, we've been doing it this way. It's been working really well. Yeah. Uh, you know, just being able to do that. Cause I think families and parents specifically, you're being challenged to solve something that you never thought you would have to solve and that you may mm -hmm. not feel equipped to solve. So lean in on each other um, and have grace with yourself, man. Have <laughs> grace with yourself as parents, have grace with your kids, um, have grace with your neighbors, have grace with the teachers. Um, you know, I recognize like all of us are on edge and this, and this has been the motto I've been sharing like with my staff and with my clients is let's just acknowledge nobody's at baseline. Mm -hmm. Nobody's at baseline. And I, I mean, I even tell my clients, like, I am not at baseline. Yeah. Nobody's at baseline. So let's not get frustrated if we can't be at our best. I mean, we don't want to use that as an excuse to fall backwards, 
but we want to have that kind of grace for ourselves and for yeah. the people we're going to be interacting with, I think. So what kind of final encouragement would you give somebody, maybe some hope to a person that might be watching this right now? Maybe they're sitting at home and maybe they are thumbing through Facebook and they've been overwhelmed with, you know, political memes or news or whatever it might be. What kind of word of encouragement would you give them? I think that if we can show grace to each other and if we can persevere through this while being honest and acknowledging it's not comfortable um, and, you know, heaven forbid somebody who has friends or relatives who are sick or has even passed, like it's beyond mm. uncomfortable. It's tragic. Yeah. Um, but I think in the long haul, we have the opportunity to really grow our communities, to really learn who our neighbors are. Um, I think we're going to see like technology is going to advance and do some cool things that are going to stay around. Um, but when I think about what it means, and maybe just through the Christian lens too, is we have this opportunity to really put some of the principles of the New Testament. Like when Paul writes and encourages us to count other people as more significant to ourselves in Philippians. Or, mm -hmm. you know, in First John, where John writes about how we are to love one another so that others might see the love of God. Like, this is a time for us to do that. Um, yeah. And that's probably the hardest, the hardest part, but I think it's encouraging because it moves us through this. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're able to put other people before ourselves and really try to act from a place of love for our community, I think we're going to heal through this. Um, I think we're going to mourn where we need to mourn. Um, and, you know, I don't want to give a false hope that everything is great and perfect and wonderful, but I do think there's avenues for like support and healing through this. And it's ultimately going to come through people who follow some of these scriptural principles and you don't have to even be a believer to put those into place. Like, you know, be graceful, kind to people around you. Um, you know, and that's, I think it's going to go a long way. Yeah. Man, I hope there was some encouragement in there for you. Would you do me a favor? In the comments below, would you drop in there? What is the, the biggest burden that you're facing right now? The reason I ask you to do that is that we want to be praying for you. We here at Smithfield Christian Church, we recognize that we're all going through a difficult and weird and crazy time right now. And we would love to partner with you by praying for you. We're here for you. SCC loves Smithfield and beyond, and we just want to be here to encourage and support you.